Emma Swanson, a 50-year-old office worker, living a life that's far from what I had envisioned for myself a decade ago. My journey into this unexpected life began at my father's company, where amidst balancing work and household chores, I met William. He was a sales rep for a client, not particularly my type looks-wise, but his bright, smiling presence drew me in. I've always found it hard to make friends, but with William it was different. I never thought I'd meet someone like you here, William confessed one day, his gaze sincere and warm. It caught me off guard, his openness, his ease around me. I laughed, a bit nervously. I could say the same about you. At that moment, something shifted. I was attracted to him, not just for his looks, but for the person he was. Bright, always smiling, and somehow always able to see the positive in me when I couldn't. Our relationship started soon after, and with every passing day, my fears of not being good enough for him started to fade. He had a way of making me feel valued, loved even, despite my own insecurities. Your shy personality and homemaking skills are wonderful, he would say, making my heart flutter. But just when I thought things couldn't get more serious, William dropped a bombshell six months into our relationship. Actually, I have a daughter who's turning 10, he revealed the day he proposed. The news was unexpected, to say the least. I knew he was divorced, but a child. It threw me into a whirl of emotions. Despite the shock, the thought of marrying him excited me more than anything. His proposal, under the soft glow of the restaurant lights, felt like a scene from a dream. Stay away from a divorced man with kids. It's bound to make you suffer, my father's stern warning echoed in my mind. Yet, William's promise, I will definitely make you happy, felt like a vow I could trust my life with. Choosing to marry William was a decision that went against everyone's advice including my strict fathers. But love, or what I thought was love, blinded me to the warnings. I wish I could tell my past self to listen to my parents. I'd often think back, not realising then the truth in those words. The early days with William felt like a dream. He introduced me to his daughter, Isabella, who accepted me more quickly than I could have hoped. Nice to meet you, I'm Emma. I greeted her, trying to mask my nervousness with a smile. Nice to meet you too. You're a CEO's daughter and a career woman. That's so cool. Isabella's eyes sparkled with genuine admiration. And in that moment, any doubts I had about forming a new family started to dissipate. That night, as I cooked dinner for the three of us, I felt a sense of completeness I hadn't known I was missing. Isabella's laughter filled the room and William's contented smiles assured me that everything was as it should be. Emma's cooking is the best, Isabella declared, and in her words I found a new purpose. Yet as I lay in bed that night, the weight of my father's warnings and the reality of the new life I was stepping into settled around me. Will I be a good mother to Isabella? Can I truly make this family work? The questions lingered, but so did a quiet hope, fueled by William's promise and the unexpected warmth of a new beginning. Life as William's wife and Isabella's stepmother started with a flurry of adjustments and renovations, both in our home and hearts. Transforming my single-person apartment into a family-friendly home brought an unexpected joy. We'll need to make some changes around here, I remember telling William, who nodded in agreement, his eyes reflecting the shared excitement of starting our life together. Isabella's arrival into my previously quiet life was like a breath of fresh air. The first time she visited our apartment, her excitement was palpable. It's so big. Amazing, she exclaimed, running from room to room, her laughter echoing off the walls. Witnessing her happiness, I made a silent vow to do everything within my power to ensure she could grow up to be a fine adult. Our family dynamic was unconventional, but filled with love. Despite not being related by blood, the three of us quickly became a real family. William, Isabella and I would spend evenings together, playing games or watching TV, sharing jokes and laughter. We're like a puzzle, fitting perfectly together, 
I often thought, cherishing the peaceful and fun atmosphere of our home. One day, while we were having dinner, Isabella looked up from her plate and said, Emma, your food is so much better than Dad's. I'm glad we're a family. Her words warmed my heart, and William chimed in. Yeah, Emma has brought so much joy into our home. We're lucky to have her. Despite the joy, not everything was smooth sailing. Managing family finances became a significant aspect of our life together. As someone who had worked at my father's company for years, holding a managerial position, I had a decent salary that became the primary financial support for our household. The agreement is simple, I explained to William one evening as we sat down to discuss our budget. The one who can earn more does so, and the other helps out more at home. William was more than willing to take on household chores and help with Isabella's upbringing. I'm all for it, he said, his voice carrying a hint of relief. As long as we're all happy and Isabella has everything she needs, I'm good. Our family motto, that contributions didn't have to be financial to be valuable, helped us navigate through the complexities of blended family life with grace. However, even with our shared responsibilities and mutual support, I couldn't shake off the nagging worry about integrating fully into Isabella's life. Will she ever truly see me as her mother? I pondered, often losing sleep over this thought. Despite these fears, the daily joys and challenges of our family life kept me grounded, reminding me of the love that brought us together and the new bonds we were forming every day. As time passed, our lives intertwined further, creating a tapestry of memories that I hoped would hold strong against any storm. Yet, beneath the surface, the seeds of future challenges were unknowingly being sown, their sprouts invisible to our eyes, preoccupied with the day-to-day -day of family life. As the years passed, our once peaceful and harmonious family began to experience the inevitable shifts that time and growth bring. Isabella, who had once looked up to me with eyes full of admiration, started to change as she entered middle school. The transformation was subtle at first, but grew more pronounced with each passing day. She joined the school's badminton team, a commitment that took her away from home for long hours filling her schedule with practice sessions and tournaments. I noticed the distance between us widening, a chasm that seemed to deepen with every curt response and avoided gaze. Isabella, how was practice today? I would ask, attempting to bridge the gap with conversation. It was fine, she would reply, her eyes glued to her smartphone, her attention clearly elsewhere. I shared my concerns with William one evening, hoping for reassurance or advice. She's just in her rebellious phase, he said, dismissing my worries with a wave of his hand. She's in middle school, Emma. It's normal. I wanted to believe him, to chalk up the growing distance to a phase that would pass. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the gulf between Isabella and me seemed only to widen. I tried to engage her in different ways, hoping to find a bridge back to the closeness we once shared. Would you like to help me cook dinner tonight? I'd suggest, only to be met with a deep sigh or a sharp, what? Don't talk to me. Even the shared space of our living room, once a place of laughter and togetherness, felt divided. Isabella would converse with William as if I weren't there, ignoring any comments or questions I made. Yet when she needed something, like a uniform washed for the next day's game, she knew exactly who to ask. Hey, can you wash this for me? She'd say, her tone indicating that this was the only form of interaction she deemed necessary with me. Despite the hurt and confusion her attitude caused me, I continued to fulfil her requests, clinging to the hope that these small acts of service might somehow mend the rift between us. But my job, demanding as it was, often made it impossible to meet every demand. I want the cake sold near the station, she'd demand, or I don't like this side dish, make hamburgers instead. I had to refuse more often than not. Each refusal met with visible frustration and the biting remark, useless, a mother should at least do that much. Each of these encounters left me feeling inadequate, 
questioning my role in her life and in our family. The situation at home began to affect my work, my thoughts often drifting to Isabella and our strained relationship. I found myself working late more frequently, using the demands of my job as an excuse to avoid the tension that awaited me at home. One particularly trying day, I decided to confront the issue head on. Isabella, can we talk about what's been going on? I asked, my voice steady but my heart racing. She looked at me, finally making eye contact, but her gaze was cold, dismissive. What's there to talk about? You're just not what I expected, she said, her words cutting deeper than any silence could. I turned to William for support, but his response was equally disheartening. She's got a point, Emma. Maybe you're just trying too hard. Let her be. The realisation that I was facing this alone, without the support of my husband or the affection of my stepdaughter, was a bitter pill to swallow. The dynamics within our family had shifted, and I found myself on the outside looking in, struggling to find my place in a home that no longer felt like mine. The strain in my marriage to William became increasingly evident as the dynamics within our family shifted. What started as a partnership filled with mutual support and understanding had slowly degenerated into a relationship that felt more like cohabitation with a roommate rather than a life shared with a spouse. William's indifference towards me grew more pronounced with each passing day. The man who once showered me with affection and attention had retreated into a shell of apathy. Our conversations, once filled with laughter and plans for the future, had dwindled to discussions about Isabella's needs or the mundane tasks of daily life. One evening, seeking to rekindle the spark that once defined our relationship, I suggested, how about we go on a date, just the two of us, for old time's sake? William looked at me as if I had suggested something absurd. A date? We have a daughter, Emma. Don't talk about something as creepy as dating. What would Isabella say? His rejection stung deeply. But we used to go on dates all the time, even after Isabella came into our lives, I protested weakly, hoping to remind him of the joy those moments brought us. He shrugged, uninterested. That was different. Things have changed. The realisation that William no longer saw me as his partner, but merely as a fixture in his life, was heart-wrenching. Our relationship had lost its warmth, leaving a cold void where love and affection once resided. The financial strain added another layer of tension between us. Despite my managerial position at my father's company and a decent salary, our savings were nearly non-existent, eroded by William and Isabella's extravagant spending. We need to be more careful with our expenses, I warned, presenting a budget I had carefully drafted. William's response was dismissive, bordering on contemptuous. You're really stingy, you know that? Can't believe I'm married to such a terrible woman. His words felt like a slap in the face, a stark contrast to the man I had married who promised to make me happy against all odds. The man who once looked at me with love and admiration now regarded me as little more than a financial resource, easily discarded when deemed insufficient. The deterioration of our marriage weighed heavily on me, the loneliness and isolation becoming constant companions. I found myself questioning the very foundation of our relationship, wondering if the love I thought we shared was merely an illusion. The realisation that I was more alone in my marriage than I had ever been outside of it was a bitter truth to face. The man who vowed to stand by me, to build a life together, had become a stranger, leaving me to navigate the stormy waters of our failing relationship alone. As the days passed, the distance between us grew, both emotionally and physically. The lack of affection, the absence of shared dreams, and the constant undercurrent of financial disputes became the defining features of our mariachi. What was once a haven of love and security had transformed into a battleground, leaving me to mourn the loss of the life I once believed we could have together. The evening that unveiled the harsh truths about William and Isabella's perceptions of me felt like a scene from a nightmare. The air was heavy with tension 
as I returned home from a particularly demanding day at work, only to be greeted by their smirking faces. It was as if they had been eagerly awaiting my return, not with warmth, but with a cold, calculated disdain. Finally home, huh? Took your time, William remarked, his tone laced with sarcasm. I was taken aback by their unusual behaviour. I've been swamped with work recently, but what's going on with you two? I asked, a sense of dread beginning to form in the pit of my stomach. Without a word, William thrust a large envelope into my hands. Confused, I opened it to find my personal belongings, clothes, cosmetics, even photos that held precious memories. My heart sank as the reality of the situation began to dawn on me. Is this what I think it is? My voice was barely above a whisper, the shock rendering me almost speechless. Isabella's response was cold and devoid of any affection. It's exactly what you think. We've decided it's time for you to leave. The words felt like a physical blow, knocking the breath out of me. I struggled to comprehend how we had reached this point, how the family I had poured my heart and soul into could discard me so callously. As I stood there reeling from the revelation, William and Isabella began to unveil their true feelings with ruthless clarity. I married you thinking it was a good deal, a CEO's daughter. I thought you'd bring wealth and stability, but look at us now, scrimping and saving like commoners, William sneered. Isabella chimed in, her words dripping with disdain. I thought having a career woman as a mom would be cool, but all I got was a miser who can't even spoil her daughter. You're an embarrassment. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You can't be serious. We're a family. Families support each other, not... This, I stammered, my mind racing to make sense of their cruel words. William's laughter was bitter. Family? No, Emma. This was never about family. It was about convenience. And now? You're just inconvenient. Their confessions continued, each word slicing through me like a knife. William admitted to marrying me for financial stability and childcare. Not love. Isabella revealed her disdain for my inability to live up to her expectations of a lavish lifestyle. I can't believe this. I've tried so hard to be a good wife, a good mother, I said, my voice breaking under the weight of my shattered illusions. Trying isn't good enough, Emma. You failed at both, William concluded, his words sealing the fate of our relationship. As I looked at them, my husband and stepdaughter, I realised I didn't recognise them anymore. The people before me were strangers, their hearts as cold as their words. The revelation that my marriage was nothing more than a transaction, and my role as a mother was unappreciated and unwanted, was devastating. With my belongings in hand and my heart in pieces, I knew there was no turning back. The family I thought I had built was an illusion, shattered by the harsh reality of their betrayal. The revelations of that night marked the end of my life as I knew it, forcing me to face the painful truth that I was alone in a battle I never knew I was fighting. The realization that my marriage was a facade and my role within this family was no longer wanted or needed hit me like a tidal wave leaving me to navigate through the wreckage of what I once believed was a loving relationship. The night William and Isabella revealed their true feelings was the night my world crumbled around me. Yet, amidst the devastation, a resolve within me began to stir, a resolve to leave behind the pain and betrayal. The morning after their cruel revelations, the house felt oppressively silent the air thick with unspoken words and unresolved tensions. I had spent a sleepless night replaying their words in my mind, each memory a sharp sting to my already wounded heart. But as dawn broke, so did my resolve to not let this be the end of my story. I need to start packing, I whispered to myself, the decision feeling both terrifying and liberating. As I began to pack my belongings, each item I placed into the boxes felt like I was packing away pieces of a life I once cherished. William watched me in silence, his earlier animosity replaced with a cold indifference. So, you're actually leaving, he remarked, not a question, but an observation. Yes, I am, 
My voice was steady, despite the turmoil inside. You've made it clear that my presence here is neither wanted nor valued. Isabella, on the other hand, watched with a curious detachment, as if the unfolding drama was nothing more than a scene from a television show. I never thought you'd actually leave, she said, her tone devoid of the warmth I once thought we shared. Packing these boxes. It's not just about leaving a house. It's about leaving a life that I thought was mine, I admitted, feeling the weight of my words. But I've realised that staying here, in this environment, would only cause more pain. As I continued to pack, the reality of my situation became increasingly clear. I was not just leaving a home, I was leaving behind a relationship that had defined a significant part of my adult life. The process was cathartic in a way, each item packed away signifying a step towards reclaiming my independence and self-worth. Where will you go? William finally asked, his voice betraying a hint of curiosity. I've arranged to stay in a company-owned apartment for now, I replied, not wanting to divulge too much. I'll figure out the rest as I go. The finality of my departure became real when I stood at the threshold, bags packed, ready to step into a future uncertain, yet filled with the promise of new beginnings. Turning to face William and Isabella one last time, I found the words that had eluded me the night before. You may not realise it now, but one day you'll regret how you've handled this. Not because of me, but because of what it says about who you are, I said, the clarity of my decision lending strength to my voice. William's response was a shrug, a non-committal acknowledgement of my departure. Isabella, however, remained silent, her earlier bravado absent in the face of the reality before her. As I walked away, the weight of my past behind me, I felt a sense of empowerment amidst the sorrow. The path ahead was fraught with uncertainty, but for the first time in a long while I felt in control of my destiny. My departure marked not just the end of my marriage and my role as a stepmother, but the beginning of a journey towards self-discovery and healing. The journey from the home I once shared with William and Isabella to the company apartment was a blur, a mixture of relief and apprehension. But as I settled into my new space, a sense of peace began to settle over me. The decision to leave, as painful as it was, had been the right one. In the quiet of my new beginning, I realised that departure was not just an act of leaving, but an act of courage. A step towards a future where my worth and happiness were no longer tied to those who failed to see my value. In the solitude of my new apartment, a space devoid of the memories that had once filled my life with both joy and sorrow, I found myself at a crossroads. The silence offered me a chance to reflect, to sift through the years of my marriage and my role within a family that no longer existed. It was during these moments of introspection that I began to peel back the layers of my own self-deception and face the truths I had long ignored. I poured myself a cup of tea, the steam rising in the quiet kitchen like the thoughts swirling in my mind. How did I get here? I asked myself, not for the first time. The answer, I realised, lay not in the actions of William and Isabella, but in the choices I had made and the signs I had overlooked. As I sat at the small kitchen table, a lone figure surrounded by unpacked boxes, I allowed myself to revisit the beginnings of my relationship with William. He was always so charming, so attentive, I mused, remembering the days when his affection seemed boundless and his promises of happiness felt like a solid foundation upon which to build a life. But when did the facade begin to crumble? I pondered aloud, tracing the arc of our relationship from its hopeful start to its bitter end. The realisation hit me like a wave. The signs had always been there, subtle at first, then growing more pronounced as the years passed. William's indifference, Isabella's growing disdain and my own deep-seated fear of confronting the truth about our family dynamics. I ignored the red flags, I admitted to myself, a bitter acknowledgement of my role in the unravelling of my own happiness. It wasn't just about William's shifting affections or Isabella's changing attitudes. 
It was about my willingness to overlook the truth, to cling to the hope that love and dedication could overcome any obstacle. The reflection brought clarity, but also a profound sense of loss. Not just the loss of a marriage and a family, but the loss of the person I had been before, optimistic, trusting, and eager to please. I lost myself in the process, I whispered, the words echoing in the empty room. Yet, with realization came empowerment. For the first time, I acknowledged my own strength and resilience, qualities that had been overshadowed by my desire to maintain a facade of a happy family. I am more than the sum of my failed relationships, I declared, a newfound determination stirring within me. I began to see the departure from my old life not as an end, but as a beginning. A chance to rediscover who I was before William and Isabella, to redefine my values and priorities, and to pursue a life filled with genuine happiness and fulfillment. The reflections of those quiet days and nights became the foundation upon which I started to rebuild my life. Each realization, each acknowledgement of past mistakes, and each step towards self-acceptance and empowerment paved the way for a future that was entirely my own. As I unpacked the boxes that contained remnants of my old life, I did so with a sense of purpose. Each item I decided to keep or discard symbolized a choice, a choice to hold on to memories that brought joy and to let go of those that brought pain. In the solitude of my new beginning, I found not loneliness, but peace, a peace that came from understanding my past, accepting my present, and embracing the uncertainty of my future with open arms. The journey of reflection and realization was not an easy one, but it was necessary. It marked the end of one chapter and the start of another, this time with me as the author of my own story. The decision to divorce William was not made lightly. It was a culmination of months of reflection, realizations about my self-worth, and a deep understanding that liberation from an unhappy marriage was not only necessary, but vital for my well-being. The process, fraught with legalities and emotional upheavals, was daunting. Yet with each step forward, I felt the chains of my past loosening. Sitting across from William at the mediator's office, I couldn't help but reflect on the irony of our situation. Here we were, finalizing the end of our union, in a setting as sterile and devoid of emotion as our marriage had become. Do you agree to the terms as stated? The mediator asked, looking between us for confirmation. Yes, I agree, I said, my voice steady. William nodded his agreement, his expression unreadable. As we signed the documents that legally dissolved our marriage, a sense of surrealism washed over me. This act, so simple yet so profound, marked the end of a significant chapter in my life. The finality of it brought a mix of emotions, sadness for what could have been, relief that it was finally over, and a burgeoning sense of freedom. Leaving the mediator's office, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders, a sensation I hadn't realized I'd been carrying until it was gone. The air seemed fresher, the sky more open, a reflection of my newfound liberation. The days following the divorce were a blend of introspection and action. I busied myself with work and the process of redefining my life on my own terms. There were moments of loneliness, of course, but they were tempered by the realization that being alone was far preferable to the loneliness I had felt within my marriage. I am free, I whispered to myself one evening as I watched the sunset from my apartment window, the colors of the sky mirroring the tumult of emotions within me. It was a declaration of independence a recognition of my journey from the confines of an unhappy marriage to the liberation of a life lived true to myself. The liberation I felt was not just from William or the failed expectations of our marriage. It was a liberation from my own self-imposed limitations, from the fear of facing the world alone and from the belief that my happiness was contingent upon the approval and affection of others. With the divorce finalized, I began to explore the possibilities that lay before me. I rediscovered old hobbies that I had set aside during my marriage, reconnected with friends who had drifted away, and even began to entertain the idea of dating again. Not in search of something missing, 
but as a celebration of the life I was rebuilding. The most profound change, however, was in my relationship with myself. I learned to appreciate my own company, to find joy in solitude, and to understand that my value was not defined by my marital status or by the roles I played in the lives of others. My liberation from the marriage was, in many ways, a rebirth. It was an opportunity to live authentically, to make choices that reflected my desires and values, and to embark on a journey of self-discovery that was both exhilarating and intimidating. As I navigated this new chapter, I found strength in the lessons learned from my past. The pain of the divorce and the years of unhappiness were not in vain. They were the catalysts for growth, for the emergence of a stronger, more resilient version of myself. The journey of divorce and liberation was not just about ending a marriage. It was about beginning a life where I was the architect of my own happiness, free from the shadows of the past and open to the limitless possibilities of the future. In the aftermath of my divorce from William, I found myself standing at the precipice of a new beginning, both personally and professionally. The turmoil of my personal life had, in many ways, mirrored the challenges I faced at work, where my father's expectations and my own ambitions often collided. Yet as the dust of my broken marriage settled, I discovered a newfound resilience that propelled me forward, transforming both my career and my sense of self. Working in my father's company had always been a double-edged sword. On one hand, it provided me with a sense of stability and belonging. On the other, it was a constant reminder of the expectations placed upon me, not just as an employee, but as a daughter. The promotion I received in the wake of my divorce was a testament to my hard work and dedication, but it also marked a turning point in my relationship with my father. Emma, you've earned this, my father said, his voice a mixture of pride and acknowledgement. Your dedication, especially through these difficult times, has not gone unnoticed. Hearing those words from him, I felt a wave of emotions. For so long, I had strived for his approval both in my personal and professional life. Now, standing in the aftermath of my divorce, I realized that his approval was not the benchmark by which I measured my success. My growth, both within the company and as an individual, was a result of my own perseverance and strength. This realization was liberating. I began to see my role in the company not as a path laid out for me by my father, but as a canvas on which I could paint my own future. I embraced my new position with a sense of purpose and vision that extended beyond the confines of familial expectations. The divorce had stripped away many of the roles I had clung to for identity, wife, stepmother, the dutiful daughter. In their place, I found a deeper, more authentic sense of who I was and what I wanted from life. I rekindled passions that had been suppressed by the demands of my marriage and my desire to meet my father's expectations. I travelled, explored new hobbies, and reconnected with old friends, each experience a step towards rediscovering the person I had lost along the way. Perhaps most importantly, I learned to appreciate the value of solitude. The quiet moments that I had once dreaded became opportunities for reflection and growth. I found joy in my own company, realizing that my happiness did not depend on the approval or presence of others, but on my own inner peace and contentment. My journey of growth in the aftermath of my divorce was not just about overcoming the pain of a failed marriage, it was about breaking free from the expectations that had defined me for so long. It was a journey of self-discovery, of learning to navigate the complexities of familial relationships while forging my own path. As I look back on that period of my life, I see it not as a time of loss, but as a pivotal moment of transformation. The end of my marriage was, in many ways, the beginning of a new chapter, one in which I was the author of my own story, free to explore the depths of my potential without the constraints of others' expectations. The growth I experienced was not measured by promotions or accolades, 
but by the quiet confidence that comes from knowing I had faced my deepest fears and emerged stronger, more self-assured and ready to embrace whatever the future held. As the dust of my tumultuous past began to settle, I found myself in a place of profound reflection. My journey through the heartache of a failing marriage, the painful yet liberating process of divorce, and the subsequent period of personal growth, had led me to a deeper understanding of myself, my relationships, and my aspirations for the future. My thoughts often wandered back to Isabella and William. Despite the bitterness that marked the end of our relationship, I harbored no ill will towards them. Instead, I found myself contemplating the consequences of their actions, not with resentment, but with a sense of closure and forgiveness. It was clear that our paths were meant to diverge, each of us on our own journey towards healing and self-discovery. Isabella, in particular, occupied a significant part of my reflections. The bond we shared, though marred by misunderstanding and hurt towards the end, was an integral chapter of my life. I hoped that in time she would come to understand the decisions I made and find her own path to happiness and fulfillment. My love for her, unchanged by the circumstances, remained a testament to the complex, often challenging nature of familial love. The decision to move forward without William and Isabella was not made lightly. It came from a place of self-respect and a recognition of my own worth, a realization that my happiness and future were not tethered to those who could not value or understand me. This decision, though painful, was a necessary step towards embracing a future filled with potential. As I looked towards that future, I felt a sense of optimism and excitement that had once seemed impossible. My professional life, enriched by my experiences and the growth I had achieved, held new opportunities for leadership and innovation. The promotion at my father's company was not just a career milestone, but a symbol of my resilience and determination to succeed, no matter the personal trials I faced. On a personal level, the future held a promise of renewal and the possibility of love that was built on mutual respect, understanding and shared values. The lessons learned from my marriage with William had taught me the importance of communication, honesty and the courage to be true to oneself in a relationship. The reflections on my past, while tinged with moments of sadness, were overwhelmingly coloured by a sense of gratitude. The challenges I had overcome served as a foundation for the person I had become, stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. They had taught me the value of self-reliance, the importance of setting boundaries, and the beauty of forging one's own path. Looking ahead, I saw a horizon filled with endless possibilities. The journey of self-discovery that began in the ashes of my old life had opened the door to a world of new beginnings. Whether in love, in my career, or in the simple joys of everyday life, I approached the future with an open heart and an unwavering belief in the promise of what was yet to come. In this moment of reflection, I realized that the most significant journey was not behind me, but ahead. The future, once a source of fear and uncertainty, now shone brightly with the light of potential and hope. Armed with the lessons of the past and the strength of my convictions, I stepped into the unknown, ready to embrace whatever adventures lay ahead confident in my ability to navigate whatever challenges and opportunities the future might hold.